Hey guys, Will here. So if you have your PC tucked away somewhere behind a sim racing rig, or maybe inside a cabinet for a media center, then no doubt you've been frustrated at some point by having to climb around behind things to hit the power button and get things booted up. Or if you need to switch off in a hurry as well, sometimes that can be very, very difficult. So today I'm gonna to show you how we can resolve this issue by building a remote power switch for your PC. So let's get going. So let's quickly run through the bits and pieces that we're gonna to need to actually put this together. And I'll take you through the tools that we're gonna to use to assemble everything as well. Now, everything that you see here, I purchased from JCAR Electronics here in Australia, but I'll put some links down in the description below for you guys to where you can pick these up internationally as well. So starting off with the cable that we're gonna to use to run between where we want the power button to be installed and the PC itself. This is a four core cable with a nice thick insulation there. Because this is going onto a motion simulator, I wanted to have a nice thick cable that wasn't gonna get snagged, but you can see the four individual cores in the wire there. Two of those are gonna be used for the power switch itself, and then two of those are gonna be used to power the LED as well. Now I've got a five meter length of that, but obviously depending on how far away you need the uh, cable to reach will uh, determine how long you need the cable to be. So then we move on to the actual power switch that we're gonna be using. So this is a guy that I've linked down in the description for you guys. This is available in blue, red, or green illumination. Now this is a momentary, meaning that it only latches when you actually push the button. It doesn't click on and then click off. And that is important. You do need a momentary switch. And you also need a switch that is normally open, meaning that it only actually closes the circuit when you're pushing the button. You don't want it to be normally closed and open when you push the button. Now, if we flip this around, you can actually see it's got a bunch of contacts on the back there. Two of those, these two are for powering the LED. And again, we'll talk about that in a moment. And then we've got two separate poles here, so we can actually have this activate two separate circuits. And I may end up using this to power on both of my PCs, ultimately my uh, sim and my streaming PC, we'll see. But the three different contacts here can be used for either a normally open or normally closed circuit. So the way we're gonna be using this is wiring it as a normally open that closes once we push the button. We'll talk about the wiring diagrams and everything a little bit later on once we get going on that. So again, available in three different colors, red, green, or blue, and I'll link to all of those down below. Now you can of course use any normally open momentary switch that you would like to. That's just the one I thought looked the most classy, so that's the one I went with. But uh, you know, if you wanna use one of those engine start buttons that you can buy for race cars, you know, really the sky's the limit. You can use your imagination and uh, get as creative as you want with this. Now we have a little jiffy box here as well. I'll quickly open that up for you as well. And this is simply gonna be used to create a nice little flat interface that we can put the button on to attach it to our sim rig. So again, this is optional. You don't need to have one of these, but you know, it just makes things tidier. So the way I think I'm gonna mount this is probably have the button sitting in the side here, or maybe on the front like that, or maybe even on here like that. And then we've got two little holes here that we can easily use to mount to our aluminum profile for the sim rig. And this just opens up. We can drill holes through it to uh, install the button. Pretty self-explanatory there. And then we've got a couple of cable glands as well. So that's those guys. These are just gonna be used to pass the cable through to the jiffy box on the other side, give it that kind of automotive look, uh, as well as if necessary, run it into the case on your PC as well. I'll show you that a little later on as well. Depending on the type of case you have, will determine whether something like this is necessary or not, but I just got a packet of two in case I needed the second one. And obviously we just wanna make sure that the thickness of the gland there is sufficient that we can run our shielded cable or our insulated cable through as well. So this one is a three millimeter to 6.5 millimeter, as you can see on the sticker there. So we've got a four pin connector there, and that's just simply so that we can unplug this from the PC should we want to move the PC away. Obviously this is gonna be bolted to the sim rig itself, so we don't wanna have it sort of tethered. We wanna be able to unplug it if we wanna move the PC to another location. So that's what we're gonna be using for that, and it's just a sort of automotive four pin connection. Again, you can use any four pin connector that you want as long as it's well insulated and not gonna short out against anything inside the PC case. Then we've got a four pin Molex connection splitter. Now you can use a serial ATA or SATA connector here as well, should you wish to do so. In my particular case, I had a spare Molex connection available in the case. So this is just simply taking one four pin Molex connection from the PC's PSU and then splitting it out to two, so we can use one as a pass-through and then one will uh, cut the connector off and wire up 
into our wiring loom. And we may as well mention it while we're here. We've got a yellow, black, black, and red. The yellow and black on this side are our 12 volt, which is what we're gonna be using to power the LED on our light. And then our black and our red on the opposing side are our five volt rail on the power supply, should we ever need that. So again, depending on the uh, push button that you use and the LED that it has inside it, will determine what kind of voltage you need. There is a header on the motherboard as well that does output uh, a voltage for the LED, but that's generally only five volts and low current as well. So I recommend taking the power from the power supply itself rather than directly off the motherboard. And then a couple more things. We've got a length of heat shrink here just to insulate any of the wires. So that's gonna slip over our individual wires and we'll shrink that down to make nice clean connections. We'll obviously be soldering everything today as well and I'll show you how to do all that. And then last but not least, we're gonna be using this little jumper lead pack. So this doesn't look anything like the jumper leads that you'd be used to seeing on your car. But what this allows us to do is connect to our motherboard header here for our power switch. So we're gonna use two wires. Doesn't matter which color we use, we can just tear two of these off. These just kind of strip off from the side like that. And then the other side of these wires actually have little mail pin. So what we're gonna do is actually wire this in so that we can still use our original power button on the PC case, but also have this button that we can use as well. So I'll show you how to do all that in a minute too. So that is all of the bits and pieces that we're gonna actually be using to build this. And then in terms of the tools that you're gonna need, uh, you're gonna need a soldering iron. I'm using a gas powered soldering iron, just my old trusty quarter salt. Again, you don't need to have a soldering iron like this. You can just use a mains powered one, that's absolutely fine. We don't need super, super high temperatures here. I'm gonna be using a little blow torch. You can see the little flame there, I think. There it is. <laughs> I'm gonna be using that to shrink my heat shrink, but you can just use a uh, oven lighter or a cigarette lighter. I find that the blue flames tend to not leave, you know, sort of charred residue or anything like that, whereas the yellow flames tend to leave a bit of uh, ash behind. So just a little bit cleaner if you use one of these, but not really necessary. A roll of solder, of course, as well, for actually doing the connections. We're gonna use a set of side cutters as well for cutting wires and stripping wires as well. You can use wire strippers if you need them, but I find that I'm perfectly fine at stripping wires. With these, I've got enough experience at it that it's not really a problem for me anymore. And then the only other thing that I'm gonna use, and again, this is optional, is just a little set of helping hands here as well. Now, hopefully you can see that there. These are basically just little alligator clips that grab onto the wiring as we work on it, and it just allows us to kind of hold things in place so we can use both of our hands for the soldering. There's a little sponge there as well to uh, allow us to clean the soldering iron tip as we go along. And it does also have an illuminated magnifying glass as well, should you need it. So I'll link to that in the description below as well. And that is pretty much everything. So let's get to work putting this together. Okay, so you'll remember I mentioned with my power light that it takes a 12 volt DC input. So we're gonna take the 12 volt line, which is, as I said before, the yellow and black from one side on our Molex connector. We're gonna use that to power the LED. So what I'm gonna need is my side cutters here making sure that we're not cutting off the side that connects to the power supply. So this is what's gonna plug into the Molex connection on the power supply. We're gonna take one of our lines off the splitter and we're gonna cut just behind the connection here. You can leave a little bit of extra there if you want to, just in case you ever wanted to reconnect it again. That's usually a good idea. So leave maybe a little bit, a little bit less than an inch. And we're gonna snip that off and that's gonna give us our ground and positive that's gonna to go to our wiring loom a little bit later on. And then we don't wanna just have this kind of random connection floating around inside the case either. So what I generally like to do is actually snip that off at the other end as close to the connection as I possibly can. So right up in there, we're gonna snip it right down in there so it's fully insulated. And if we do need to, we can run some heat shrink over this as well, but we shouldn't need to, we should be okay. Just gonna snip it off. So now we have a Molex connection with a plug, a pass through so we can connect whatever else we need to, and then a remaining 12 volt line which we're gonna connect up to our wiring loom, and that's the piece that we cut off. We can chuck that away, we don't need that anymore. And we're just gonna strip these wires as well. So the way we do this is just grab our side cutters, leave maybe a centimeter, that's usually enough, and just gently go around the perimeter like this. So snip, 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 snip. We're not squeezing in, we're just doing this enough that it softens the plastic. Just keep going around and then hold it there up against the metal so you can kind of feel the wire inside but not squish on it and then just pull. And easy as that. So we just twist it up 
And again, we will be soldering this later on, but this is just preparation for now. We're gonna do exactly the same thing with our negative line as well. So run around. Again, we're not cutting anything here. We're not, we're not putting any pressure into this at all. We're literally just softening the plastic and then tug and strip. There we go. Twist it up again. There we are. That is our power wire prepped. And now we're gonna do the same thing with our jumper leads. So we'll peel two of these off. It doesn't matter which color you use. Peel them off the strip. And then we're gonna cut this in half. So again, side cutters. Snip. And then we're just gonna split it and strip each wire. So we have our male and our female lengths there. So splitting down the middle. And this one's gonna be a little bit more tricky to do with side cutters because it is a very, very thin wire inside. So that's why, I mean, we've got a whole bunch of spares there. So don't freak out if you do ruin it. Very gently go around and tug. Oh, slipping a little bit there. There we go. That's one. Twist it up. And then we're gonna do exactly the same thing on the remaining three. So now we have our male and female header pins here with stripped and twisted wires and our power connection here with our yellow 12 volt and ground. So next up, we want to strip one end of this guy. I'm probably gonna strip about an inch, I'd say, off the black shield, and that will expose the four individual cores, and then we can strip those back as well. So again, same method here. We're just gonna go around the outside, just kind of slicing through the plastic here, and then I'm just gonna twist it. That'll break it free, and then we can, theoretically at least, let's just slide that off. And we actually do have a metal shield in there as well. I actually wasn't expecting that. So we can get rid of that as well. We don't need to worry about that guy. So again, this, this cable was completely overkill. I'll put a couple of options in the description for you guys for cheaper stuff as well. But we're just gonna snip through this shield here. It's gonna get a little messy here. <laughs> and there we go. There is our four exposed wires. So we'll strip those back as well. Again, probably about a centimeter will be enough. And we will run some heat shrink over this end as well, just because we do have that metal braid. We don't want that to short up against anything, but we'll do that closer to the end when we start wiring up this side. We'll slide some heat shrink down and shrink that on. So there's one. And then do exactly the same thing with the remaining three. So there we go, four stripped and prepped wires. And we're gonna use, I think we'll stay with the same color theme as we have throughout. So we've got a yellow and a black wire here that we can use for our 12 volt power. Normally I'd use red and black, to signify positive and negative, but seeing as it's the same as the Molex, I think it's gonna just make it a little bit easier to remember. So yellow is gonna be our positive, black is gonna be our negative 12 volt. What we're gonna do now is connect those to the yellow and black from our Molex connector. That's gonna create our 12 volt power. And then we're gonna use the red and white for our power switch. So next thing we wanna do now is grab some heat shrink. This is a step that people always forget until it's too late. So we're gonna snip maybe about two centimeters off here, more, you know, more is better, but you don't need to go excessive with it. So two little pieces here. And again, you can go color coded here as well if you wanted red for positive, black for negative. I'm not gonna bother, but it's up to you. And we're gonna slide those over the ends of our Molex wires here, or the wires from our Molex connection, and slide those all the way down to the bottom so they don't get shrunk by accident until we're ready. Then we're gonna to twist together our red wires. So remember they already twisted up. All we're doing now is just twisting them together. And don't worry, we will be soldering this, but this is the best way in my opinion to create nice sturdy connections. So you can see that's really nicely twisted together there. And then we're gonna use our helping hands to hold that in position. And now would be a really great time to heat up your soldering iron as well. So 
While that's heating up, let me just talk a little bit about soldering technique because I see so many people mess this up. So what we want to do, and this is actually probably hot enough now that we can just do it. So we're going to put the soldering iron on the actual joint that we're wanting to solder and let it get nice and warm. Don't be afraid of heat here. This is our friend. This is what we want. So we don't want to run the solder onto the tip of the soldering iron itself. We want to actually run it onto the joint. So you can put a little bit on the soldering iron just to see that it's hot enough and it's melting. You can see there it's melting away. But we want to actually run the solder onto the joint here. And you can see when it's hot enough, it just flows straight on like so. We don't need a huge amount there. That's plenty. And if it's hot enough, we're not going to end up with those horrible burrs everywhere. It'll be nice and good to go. So we'll quickly take that off the helping hands again so you can see. I mean, it has melted the plastic a little bit around it, but that's perfectly fine. What we want is a nice solid joint there. And then we're going to run our piece of heat shrink down over the connection that we've just created. Grab our little blowtorch and shrink that guy down like so. And there we go, that's one connection done. So exactly the same thing with our yellow one now. We want to make sure we don't twist things up here with our wiring either. So try to make sure it's not tangled before you actually twist these together. So again, make sure you've got your heat shrink on there. We're going to grab our yellow wire. We're going to twist it together. And again, we'll grab our helping hands here to give us a helping hand. And we're going to get it nice and hot. Wait a couple of seconds to get some heat into it and then run the solder onto the joint, not onto the iron. Make sure you don't breathe this stuff either. It's really nasty stuff. Ideally, you want to have some sort of a fume extraction system as well. So again, take it off the helping hands, run our heat shrink over the joint and Shrink it on down. So that is our 12 volt power running up to where our switch is going to be. Now we just need to worry about our power switch. So what we're going to be doing in this instance is actually joining these guys together. So we're going to link the yellow and the yellow together like that. And then I think it's green. I'm colorblind, so I've got no idea. <laughs> I think that's green. Twist the green ones together as well. We're actually going to separate those down even further. I might separate them completely, in fact, just so I've got a bit more space to work with here. And then again, we're going to want to run some heat shrink onto this. So we're going to cut off a slightly longer length this time. I think I probably did do it a little bit short last time, maybe an inch. One. We'll cut them both the same length too, just for presentation's sake. Two. And I'm going to slide the heat shrink on like that. Put it all the way down to the other end so it doesn't accidentally shrink when we're doing our soldering. Exactly the same on the green ones as well. Slider on there, all the way to the bottom. And then we're going to connect these up to our remaining white and red wires. Now it doesn't matter which is which, this uh, is just for the switch so it's not polarity sensitive. So we're going to go green onto white and just twist these together exactly the same as we did before. Just keeping in mind it is a slightly flimsier wire than before. So we just need to be a little bit more careful. Twist that together. Grab our helping hands again. And again, getting plenty of heat into the joint. My hands are shaking here. <laughs> I have very, very shaky hands because of my anxiety, so apologies for that. It does make soldering quite tricky, but again, we're running the solder onto the actual joint here, not onto the soldering iron. And that should be enough for that one. I'll just quickly check it. Yep, that looks totally fine. So we'll slide the heat shrink down. And then we're gonna do exactly the same thing with the yellow onto our red wire. So then we're pretty much done here now with this side of the wiring. All that's left to do is just insulate this a little bit better. So I'm going to use a length of heat shrink here, probably about two inches long. Snip it off. 
and we're gonna slide this over the entire wiring assembly. Now, the reason I didn't do this at the start and just sort of put it here is because I didn't wanna accidentally heat it up and shrink it down. So it does make it a little bit more tricky. We have to slide it over five meters of wiring now, but that's okay. So we're just gonna slide it on through. You can see it goes pretty easily once it's started. So we'll slide it all the way down, up and over connections we made. Now you are going to want to take note of the wire colors that you used on this before you completely cover it. So write it down. Uh, again, it's completely arbitrary. You can do whatever colors you want, but I'm going to remember I used yellow for my positive, black for my negative for power, and then red and white for my switch. And again, polarity isn't important for the switch itself. So slide that up and over. And there we go. That should just about do. So we slid that up and then we're going to do exactly the same thing. I might just use the, uh, oven lighter this time just so you guys can see. So a cigarette lighter or even just a match will do. I'm just gonna run over. Just be careful we don't hold it in any one place for too long. Shrink that up nicely. And there we go. So you can see there's a little bit of a char mark there but that'll rub off just with our bare hands like so. And there we go, that is our PC side of the wiring loom, ready to go. All right, so onto the switch side of the assembly now. We've got our Jiffy box, and what I've done, if we'll just pop that back cover off, I've drilled a hole here for the power switch to slot through. That's gonna slip in there like so. And then we've also got a hole on the back side too where our little grommet's gonna slide in. So I've offset them and we're gonna be mounting, in my particular case, on the side of one of the uh, wheel uprights on the profile. It's gonna kind of be sitting like that with the button kind of facing a little bit towards me. You can see there, the Jiffy box isn't quite 100% square, so I figured that would be the best way to mount it. But depending on the Jiffy box that you buy or how you actually intend to mount this on your system will determine where you drill the holes, so you don't need to copy me exactly. So we're just gonna unscrew the nut off the back of the little cable grommet here. We'll loosen this guy off as well. Actually, we can take that entire front piece off for now. Leave the little rubber piece on there. You can see there's just that little rubber gasket there. We're gonna slip it on there like that. And then chuck the nut back on the back. So you just wanna make sure when you do drill the hole, you leave enough space for the nut to go on. I've been uh, trapped by that a few times in the past and ended up having to buy another Jiffy box. So it's just gonna screw on on the back like so, tighten it down. There you go, you can, use a, um, you can use a spanner if you need to, but I mean, for this, finger tighten is perfectly fine, it's never gonna go anywhere. So we're gonna basically have like an S-bend inside and then our power switch is gonna go through like this. So our wiring will come in and then S-bend up and then go like that. And you can see there is a bit of a gap there for the wiring at the back of the assembly. So we're not gonna to have to worry about any bent pins or anything. We'll heat shrink over all the connections as we go, of course, as well. But we'll pop that power switch back out for now. And we'll grab the other end of our five meter cable here, if I can find it. There it is. Okay, so we're gonna slip the tip of the grommet over and we're gonna slide it through. Slide it through like this as well. Then through the front face. And there we go. So that's gonna give us a bit of a strain relief in there as well, because if the cable ever gets tugged on, when this is snug down, that's gonna grip tight. So if we yank on the cable, it's never gonna pull the cable through this assembly. So again, just you know, little quality things there that do make a difference. So that's just basically needs to sit on there. And then what we're gonna do is strip back this cable exactly the same way as we did previously. Probably don't need to strip quite so much back this time because all we need is just the four wires to connect to the pins on here. I'll show you which pins to connect to on there in a moment too. So now we just need to strip this back exactly the same way as we did before, strip each of the individual four cores, and then we can start soldering onto our power switch. Those with a keen eye would have noticed my mistake there as well. You need to make sure you have the nut for the back of your power switch inside this enclosure and thread it over the wire as well so we can secure it into place once we've got it all wired up. Don't forget to do that or you'll be desoldering everything and starting again. All right, so we've got our four wires stripped back now. One, two, three, four. And you can see I've put a little bit of heat shrink on these in preparation for soldering onto our connections here just so we can insulate these pins completely. Just so that on the off chance that one of these did get bent and make contact with another pin, 
it's gonna be fully insulated. We've also got a little bit of heat shrink on the back here as well, just like what we did before. So we can slide that up over and sort of pinch all of these wires together. We don't end up with any of that metal braiding getting in the way or metal shielding, I should call it, getting in the way later on. So that's how we've done that. So now let's talk about the actual wiring and pinouts on the switch itself. So on the back of this little switch, you can see on the, and excuse my grubby fingers here, <laughs> <laughs> we can see a little plus sign on this side and a negative sign on this side. So this is going to be our yellow wire or our positive 12 volts, our negative there. And then just in here, you can see a C, an NO, and an NC. So the C is our contact, and then NO is normally open, and NC is normally closed. So what that means is if we connect to our contact and our NO it means the switch is normally open and closes or completes the circuit when we push the button in. With the NC, so contact and NC connected, we're gonna end up with the switch normally closed or on, and then when we push it, it momentarily releases the switch, which is the opposite of what we want. So we're gonna go yellow wire to the positive, black wire to the negative, and then our red and white wires, doesn't matter which order we have them, again, the switch itself isn't polarity sensitive. One of them is gonna to go to contact, and one of them is gonna to go to NO. Now we do have this second row of contacts here as well. That is a second pole. So if we wanted to have this operating a second device at the same time, then we could have, we could do that as well. So say you wanted to boot a second PC or something like that, that is possible. But we're gonna get this wired up now and then I can show you how it all works. Right, so we've got a soldering iron heating up. We're gonna take our yellow wire, which is our 12 volt positive, slide it through the contact. And get exactly the same as we did before we're gonna get a decent amount of heat into the joint and then just run the solder onto the joint itself. Okay, so soldering line on the joint and then we run the solder onto the pad. There we go, it's one done. So next up we've got our black or negative wire onto our negative terminal. There we go. So I might insulate our two power wires now. So slide the heat shrink up and over the little joint. Good idea to just wait for it to cool down first though, just in case it does bind. So I'll slide that up and just quickly shrink it down. There we go. And then same deal with our positive connection. Just slide it over, there we go. So now red wire onto contact or C. Again, it doesn't matter which color you go here. You may as well insulate that while we're here as well. Shrink it down. And lastly, our white wire onto normally open. Then we're gonna slide other piece of heat shrink up as well just over those connections just to keep them nice and safe i want to have a little bit of wiggle room there get some heat into that and that should do so now we're gonna slide our wiring back through our jiffy box here slot our switch into it's going to be a little bit careful here we don't bend wires too much Get our nut on the back too. It's a little bit awkward here. There's a few hands required. We also want to obviously make sure we've got our alignment of our power button there correct too. So I want that to be straight up and down in my case. There we go. That's the power switch aligned correctly. You can see we've got a nice clean S bend in there. Then we just need to bring the back of our grommet up as well. Should be a little rubber insert there too, which will slide up and into the little groove and that allows us to sort of pinch down on that. Maintaining that S bend internally. We're just gonna crank that down. There we go. And now even if that cable gets yanked on, you can see it's not pulling on inside. So that provides strain relief. Pop the cover back on. And there we go. That is our power button.
The PC connection side completed as well. So we're just about there, but there is one more thing that we need to do before getting this all installed into our PC. So those with a keen eye might have noticed there was one more four pin connector that I showed you at the start of the video that we didn't use yet. So this all would function perfectly fine if we were to plug it into the PC now, everything would work. But these little header connections here that um, connect to the motherboard, a little bit tricky to sort of take on and off all the time. And if you have this hard mounted to a surface like a sim rig or you know a wall or something like that, then obviously anytime you wanna move your PC, you're gonna to have to take this off the motherboard and it's just gonna be a bit of a pain to do. So this last connection is gonna serve as an easy click on, click off interface so that we can remove this from the system and have it run completely independently of the button should we wish to do so. So the reason why I left it to this point is because we wanna sort of do a little bit of measurement here and make sure that we're cutting this to the right length and as well as tethering it somewhere on the PC. Now, depending on the type of PC case you have, will obviously determine exactly how you do this. On a fully enclosed PC case, sometimes you have little pass-through panels that you can pop off and put cables through. Uh, if you don't have one of those, then often there's a spare PCI slot that you can take a cover off and poke the cable through there. Maybe in the back panel, you could drill a hole. You know, it really depends. This is an open case, so it's relatively easy to work with. But depending on the motherboard that you have as well, will also determine exactly how this plays out. So let me just unlock my laptop here, and I'll quickly show you what we're gonna be doing. So if we have a look on the screen here, what we're wanting to do is unplug the power connection from the little header, and it's located down on the bottom left-hand side as we're looking at it of the motherboard, so down here. So I wanna make sure I've got enough length on my cable so that I can plug into there, plug into a Molex power connection as well, and then have the plug located somewhere conveniently on the case as well, and, and uh, I guess secured there, so that if the cable were to get tugged, then it's not gonna yank on the PC and pull the uh, connections off the motherboard. So that's obviously really important as well. So for me, about that much length is perfectly fine. So what I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna add a little bit more, just so I've got a bit of uh, chopping room as well. There we go. And this is now gonna be where we create our connection with the four pin Molex connector. So exactly the same process as before. We're gonna strip the wires back. Don't need to go quite as far this time, probably maybe an inch is far enough on either side. We'll get everything stripped, we'll get everything twisted up, and then I'll show you how to install these pins. So we've got our two wires here now prepped, stripped back with the ends twisted up. We're gonna do exactly the same thing as before with a bit of heat shrink over the end and uh, solder on the pins. Now I'm not gonna spend a whole bunch of time on this because obviously you guys don't need to buy exactly the same connector as I have. You can use whatever four pin connector you want, but essentially we have female pins there and male pins. So we're gonna cut those off and the female side, so this side with the holes is gonna go on this, just like a uh, four pin motherboard connection or a 12 volt rail for the CPU power if you've ever seen that. So that's gonna go in that side, and then the side with the pins is gonna go on this side. And as far as these themselves are concerned, we're gonna solder the pin in place there, not gonna damage those little prongs there, because those little prongs on the side are what actually clip it into the plastic housing. And then just pinch down the inner part here and the outer part there, just as a strain relief on the pin. I'll get this all done, I'll show you the finished result once we're done before I click them into the housing. So we've got our pins crimped and soldered onto the leads now. So all we really need to do is just match up the colors on either side. It doesn't matter what the colors are or what position they're in, as long as they match up on both sides of the connectors. So the pin side or the male side here is gonna go into the female housing and then vice versa on the other one. So what I might do is group these together. So we've got power on the top and um, and the switch on the bottom. It doesn't, as I, as I said, it doesn't matter though. So we'll go, that's our top there with the little notch. And we wanna make sure we've got the pin facing upright. So like that. So we're gonna slide it through the back. And if you don't have a Molex tool, you might need to poke it through with a screwdriver. I don't have one, so I will need to do that. But I'll just get them all in position here so you can kind of see what I'm doing. So it's gonna be a little hard for you guys to see, but you can kind of just push on the back of the connection, push it through into the front and you'll hear a little tiny click when it's in position. So do that on all of them. And then we're gonna slide the heat shrink up, not all the way to the end, because we do still wanna be able to see what color is what. Just leave a little gap there. We'll shrink that down, and then exactly the same thing on this side. So there's one. So we just wanna make absolutely sure that we're matching color for color.
There we go, matching on both sides. Slide that heat shrink up, shrink it down, and we're good to install on the PC. So it's very difficult to see exactly what I'm doing when my hands are blocking the shot and everything here. So what we're going to be doing is removing the existing power switch header and I'll put up on the screen here what it is for my motherboard. So you can see there where it says PWRBTN. That is the uh, two that we're going to be removing. So that's going to vary depending on what motherboard you have, but it should be labeled something pretty similar, pretty clear. So we're going to remove that from the motherboard. We're going to plug these two pins in. And again, it doesn't matter which color goes where as long as we're connecting it across the correct two pins. And then we're going to be connecting the old power switch to these two male pins here. And that's going to retain the original functionality of the power switch on the case. Then we're going to be connecting this guy to an existing Molex power connection internally. And if there's anything else that we need to plug in in line, we can use this connection here. This is just a pass through. So it's this little connection just here and the two right hand side pins. So we're going to pop that off and you can actually see on there power switch. And then we're going to feed the two new ones, so these guys go in place of those old ones. So it's gonna be pretty much impossible to see from here, but one's gonna go on the left pin there, one's gonna go on the right pin. All right, so we've got our two header pins connected there, and you can see the little power switch header which was connected before. So we're gonna pass that through the back now, and then we'll connect our two replacement pins to that guy. So on the flip side now, we got our power switch connection there with our two wires connected. Again, doesn't matter which order you put them. That's running down. We've got our Molex connection here, which is plugged into a header off the power supply now. And we've got a little extension powering one of the LED strips inside the motherboard as well. We can tuck all this away and tidy it all up, but I wanted to leave it like this just to show you. Now, the most important thing of all perhaps is we do have a little cable tie here as well. Where's my finger? There it is acting as a strain relief. So if this were to get tugged for some reason, it's not just gonna tear this wiring out of the computer, particularly off the motherboard. We really wanna be careful we're not yanking on those pins. So that's it guys, all we need to do now is connect this guy up and test it out. Here it goes. Oh, we got lights. Looks like we're up and running. So hopefully this helps you guys out if you've got a PC that's tucked away somewhere behind your SIM rig or maybe a media center or something like that and you wanna have a remote power button to get it up and running. So again, all the parts that we've used in today's video as well as the tools to get this job done are linked down in the description below. So check that out. And of course, if you do have any questions, let me know in the comments below if there's anything else you'd like more detail on, maybe a dedicated how to solder video, we can do that as well. But thank you very much for watching guys and we'll see you again soon. Bye.